in response to my last video on sexuality and uh, prejudice, um, a viewer wrote a question, and it goes like this. Similar to sexuality, I'd also wonder how in these days we should evaluate the concept of gender in regards to hermetics. Hermetics mostly orients itself on a bipolar idea of gender, that is, masculine, feminine, plus, minus, etc., which is a spectrum between the two. Yet we see that our society is developing in a way that the concept of gender is extended, extended beyond the binary spectrum in that it becomes a multinomial, multipolar spectrum. How can we exactly evaluate this in regards to hermetics? Is there some truth within it, or is that multipolar perception solely just an abstraction from a specific point in the binary spectrum of gender that isn't entirely masculine or feminine, like in the middle of the spectrum? Oh, <clears throat> well. If we take what's written in the Kabbalion about gender, which is what most people refer to these days when they speak of hermetics, um, and they really uh, sort of dislike the term gender, and you know, I totally concur with this. Uh, because it makes it about human sexuality when the point is not about just human sexuality but existence itself. It seems to have these two poles, the electric and the magnetic. That's the easiest uh, poles to deal with here as opposed to masculine and feminine because masculine is not just electric. Feminine is not just magnetic. These are societal constructs, masculine and feminine. Male and female is basically, and it is two parts to this question of gender. There's the physical gender. Okay, I have a penis. I'm a male. Okay, that physical gender. A male body and a female body, there's all kinds of uh, a combination of male and female genitalia that occur naturally in the human form to the point where a person can have both male and female genitalia or reproductive organs in one body. Some people take their naturally born genitalia and alter it in uh, an attempt to change this gender, okay? So in, in a sense, to some extent, they, they change their body physically. But what they're really changing, what's really at issue here is the societal cultural <clears throat> stereotypes of masculine and feminine that are just f false human constructs that don't really... <sighs> oh dear, words. <clears throat> They're not as rigid <clears throat> as we like to think. Let's put it that way. So, we have physical gender and psychological gender. Okay? <clears throat> and that's what transsexual is really about, is the psychological transformation from male to female or from female to male from this societal uh, box of one sex 
into the societal box of another sex. That is not uh, physical gender, really, truly. That's psychological gender. And that is, whoa, totally fluid in the human species. I mean, there is no, you can't put your finger on it and say it can only be these two. That just doesn't work. I mean, that's silly. <laughs> and that was primarily the point in um, my last video, uh, the psychological aspects of sexuality. <clears throat> Here it's the psychological aspects of gender. But, you know, this is not the gender that we need to be dealing with in hermetics. Because, I mean, this is... <clears throat> it's sort of irrelevant to hermetics. What's relevant to hermetics are the electric and the magnetic. And how these two components exist in everything, everywhere, every time, etc. They are what constitutes um, our experiential reality at every level, okay? But these, again, these are human constructs, you know? It's because we human, our human brains, you know, like thinking in this way and uh, uh, dealing with, uh, at this point in our evolution, uh, a mechanical universe where this wheel fits into this gear, and it all works out nicely, right? But it sort of belies the fact that it is all one thing. It, there is no electric without magnetic. There is no magnetic without electric. They are totally dependent upon each other. So they exist simultaneously, everywhere, always. <clears throat> it's like the elements. The elements exist only in combination. Okay. <clears throat> and <clears throat> dealing with just electric, magnetic, or any kind of polarity like this ignores the fact that there is this continuum that joins the two, unbroken continuum that blends the two, merges the two together, that makes them faces of the same coin um, that are inseparable from each other. It's that continuum that is more important in hermetics than the polarities, you know, than the poles. The continuum is where magic occurs. This is the creative part of that polarization is the continuum. <clears throat> Our modern culture is fixated, if I can speak Kabbalistically here for a moment, on Gebura and Hod, on the pillar of severity, you know, the Martian energy, that mercurial, intellectual, you know, decisiveness. And we ignore the other side of things, the Gejula part of us that sees that everything is connected and that that is where the real power lies, is in the connection. And in Netzach, where everything affects everything else, where it's always constantly interacting and growing together. That is where life comes from. So, <clears throat> those poles, those opposites, those two qualities, electric and magnetic, that uh, seem to rule everything in the world, that create everything in the world, do so only in combination, only in their coming together, only in their being together. 
<clears throat> so, <clears throat> in hermetics, we have to look at both, both aspects of polarity, of, uh, we have to recognize the joining equally to the poles. And so, uh, gender, <clears throat> we can never think of it as arbitrary. The things that we describe as masculine <clears throat> are not ever entirely electric. <laughs> the things we describe as feminine are not ever entirely magnetic. So we've got to be really careful when we deal with the ideas of these poles because they can mislead us, they can blind us. You know, if all we're looking for is the electric and the masculine, then we're missing a whole big part of it. And if all we're looking for is magnetic and the feminine, then we're missing a big part of it. Okay? So, there you go. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>